2022 Wednesday 19 10 2022 This is Power Corridor on Law FM 103.9 Power Corridor is a non-partisan radio platform for discussions aimed at giving clarity, balance, and setting the right agenda for societal change. I repeat, Power Corridor is a non-partisan platform on radio for discussions aimed at giving clarity, balance, and setting the right agenda for societal change. To join the conversation live, or catch up on previous episodes. You want to follow us on Facebook, www.facebook.com for slash law FM radio. We're streaming live on Facebook, www.facebook.com for slash law FM radio. On Instagram, we are law FM radio. Our Twitter handle is at law FM underscore radio. You can listen live on our website from anywhere in the world on www.lawfmng.com www.lawfmng.com The studio numbers, should you want to call in when we eventually open the lines for direct interaction with our guest. The studio numbers you want to save now are 070 322 7733 or 090-9555-1039 090-9555-1039 my name as usual is Bola Oba. I'm on social media platforms at facebook.com forward slash Bola dot Oba. Instagram at Bola Oba. My Twitter handle is at Bola Oba. We have a guest in our studio. But before we introduce our guest, we really have to wrap up the first segment of the show, which are uh, our Nigerian power for today. Our Nigerian power for today says, when the right hand washes the left hand, and the left hand washes the right hand, both hands become clean. When the right hand washes the left hand, and the left hand washes the right hand, both hands ants become clean. Summary analysis of some of the major news headlines today. The federal government appealed to the Nigerian Labour Congress to rescind its opposition to the registration of two new academic unions in the Nigerian public university system. The federal government is begging the Nigerian Labour Congress to recognize the two university unions or public university unions it has somewhat illegitimately uh, created wanting to break the monopoly of ASU. The cover price of liquefied petroleum gas LPG, also known as cooking gas, may soon spike across various parts of the country as the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas NLNG Limited declared force major on its 22.2 million tons per year Boni LNG export facility. Experts have warned that the cost of filling a 12.5 kg cylinder of cooking gas in Nigeria may eat 12,000 naira or more by November, up from 9,800 as of October. That in itself was a spike that people are yet to stop complaining, to stop complaining about. 
and now they're telling us that by November, Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashola, has confirmed that the construction of the second Niger Bridge has now reached its completion stage. Fashola stated this at an ongoing press briefing to present the President Major General Mamadou Bouari's retired scorecard in Abuja on Wednesday. We just hope this is real because a couple of weeks ago when we interviewed him he said the bridge was complete but the ancillary road especially the ancillary road that would connect the bridge to Asaba was yet to be completed i hope um, now we go on a short break after the commercials we do our little re-intro and formally introduce our guest who is physically live in our studios. See you after the break. Hold on tight. I'm only Femi Pedro. I'm Omo Yeli Shorai. My name is Honorable Lakim Dixon. This is Honorable Adekunle Akobada. I'm Dili Momodu. And you are listening to Law FM 103.9 for knowledge and entertainment. The only law radio station. When you listen to this station, you learn about your rights. You discover the law in ways you never imagined. You know why? Because we broadcast in your interest. It's a problem that we are all experiencing in the country. You know, different parts of the country, the same thing is happening. So, who do we call on to? Who do we hold responsible? We impact knowledge. If the grid is unable to shed the load that it ought to, it could also result in the collapse of, of the national grid. Call it what you may, but we are here to stay. The law was never biased, so why should it be now? To every individual, we are Law FM 103.99. Looking for a listening ear? A safe space. A place where you can relieve your heart and tell your story. Then join Wire on Law FM 103.9, 8 p.m. every weekday on the show. Telling life stories. Experience a conversation on radio like no other. This is Law FM 103.9 for knowledge and entertainment. entertainment. My name is Shego Arinze. Your number one hit station in town. Uh, Power Corridor. On Law FM 103.9. Welcome back to Power Corridor, Law FM 103.9. The numbers you want to save now when we start allowing calls directly for our guests to answer. The numbers are 3, 3, 8, or 090 As it is our tradition, we do a brief literary introduction before we formally introduce the guest for the day. This is a synopsis or what we have titled Knowing Surulere. Surulere is a residential and commercial local government area located on the mainland of Lagos in Lagos State, Nigeria. With an area of 8.9 square miles, that's about 23 kilometers square. At the last census in the year 2006, there were 509 1,975 inhabitants. I must tell you the truth. That is an under, under statement. Population wise for Surulere. Surulere is far, far more congested than that. Even in 2006. 
with a population density of 21,864 inhabitants per square kilometer. The local government area is bordered by Yaba, Mushi, and Ebutimeta. During the rapid urbanization of Lagos, the city expanded to the west of its lagoon, which included present-day Surulere. Families from different regions of the country have historically settled in Surulere. In addition to the local settlers of Lagos, during the 19th century, various emancipated African Brazilians and Cubans who were referred to as Aguda or Saros, I guess that is the reason why a particular person in Surulere is called Aguda, settled in Surulere. Nigerians from the northern region initially ended at Idi Araba, where many people from the eastern part were also in various quarters, but predominantly at Obele, Ikate, and Naguda areas. Residents of Lagos Island who bought or leased land from the government and are worried settled in New Lagos. In contrast, others lived in the neighbors of it the new lagos neighborhood also known as the surulere housing estate is amongst the first public housing projects in nigeria it and many other precincts of surulere now have traditional rulers the person in our studio today is a bona fide Surulere boy. They don't come more Surulere ish as it does, I guess. Uh, it may not be rivaling the fame that the likes of Whiskey, Dangote, and Co have brought to Surulere, but uh, it's quite a quantum in his own right in Surulere. Our guest today is the PDP Federal House of Representatives. Constituency one candidate, popularly known as Bobby JJ. Bobby, it's good having you. You formally then give your full name because I guess some men want to know your full name and we take it on from there. Thank you so much. Um, my name is um, Honorable Bolaji Alani JJ, popularly called um, Bobby JJ. I got a call from England that Bola, if you really want to prove that you are fair and balanced, there is uh, a London boy contesting against the incumbent speaker of the Federal House of Representatives and it is just fair and balanced that you also give him the opportunity to say why he's contesting against Bobby, why would somebody who is exposed to some of the best uh, liberal democracies in the world and you know how influential speakers of parliaments get to be in those polities, why would you want to be contesting against a, a sitting speaker of your national parliament? Just tell it to us. Thank you so much. Like I said, um my name is um, Bolaji Alani Jeje. I was born in Surulere over 50 years ago, and I um, grew up in Surulere. And um, also, I live in Surulere up to date. I can say to you today that the, um, the Speaker, Honorable Femi Bajabiamila, has been a member of the Federal House for about 20 years. And, and I think it's high time we have um, a fresh person to come and bring a fresh idea um, to be able to change Surule. Yes, the um, Honorable has done well in his own right. He has been there for a while, but I think I have a lot to bring um, to my people in Surule. Um I'm a grassroots person. I live in Surule. Like I said, I was born there. I went to school in Surule, uh, nursery school, primary school, secondary school. I home businesses in Surule. My family lives in Surule. Um, basically, I breed Surule. So I think we need somebody now to be able to bring uh, new ideas to touch the people of Surule. 
because we have a whole lot of youth out of um, jobs, no jobs, or they do all these sit under the trees. Um, like you said earlier, so really is not 500 and something population. We are more than that. Sule is about 777 uh, population as of today. Uh, the last... 777,000. Yes, thousand. Yes. Um, so, almost a million now. So, Sule needs somebody which is uh, one of them. Somebody that grew up there. Somebody that knows where they should if you say, is. If you say Sule needs somebody who is one of them, are you saying that uh, Femi is not one of you? One of, uh, you, uh, we've, we've always known Femi to be a Suleri boy. What, why <laughs> would you say somebody who is one of them? I'm not saying that. Yes, of course, uh, I know Femi is a Suleri. Uh, like you said, I'm a Suleri as well. But I believe it is high time we have a new person to come and represent Suleri. Um, yes, he has done his best. He's been there over 20 years. And um, about 20 years thereabout. This is the, his fifth time there. So if you contest again, it will be the sixth time. So I think I want to come and bring um, a but, fresh but, idea. But as somebody, you are somebody who is quite exposed to some of uh, the most advanced liberal democracies in the world. You know also that uh, ranking position or staying long in parliament sometimes could be used as an advantage to bring, to bring some um, advantages to your constituency. What, what, how would you respond to that? If somebody is telling you, okay, he spent 20 years, he, so, he does seem long enough by Nigerian standard, but you know what? It, it, it's not impossible that your member of parliament in the area you lived in England had spent more than 20 years. So what, how would you respond to that? Okay, good. Now, you know, in, um, in Nigerian politics, if you are a member of the, for example, a member of the um, Federal House of Representatives, and you've been there for oh, maybe two, three, or four times, you're a ranking officer. Yeah. So the highest you could be as a ranking officer is to be, you know, promoted to the, um, to the level of um, being a speaker. No, that's so, the ultimate. So, Honorable Femi has now, as I can say, attained the highest pinnacle of his career, which is being um, the speaker of the Federal House of Representatives. There's no way if he wins me, that he will be a speaker again. He will be just one of the members of the floor. So there is no any added advantage that he could bring back to Surulay. He has um, him been there now as a speaker. Uh, he has brought all what he could do, or what all what he could get at the National Assembly. So there is no way it could be repeated as um, as a speaker. You know. Um, um, being a speaker or being a principal officer, you know, you, uh, those things are zoned here in Nigeria. So being the speaker now, he has been zoned to, 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 to the southwest. Now microzone to Lagos and microzone further down to Surulay. So he has done that. So there's no way he will go back to be the speaker if he wins the next election. So there's really nothing he can bring uh, if he wins. So I think it's the best time for me to come and contest against him, bring all the ideas. I've lived in England for a few years. I had enough Western ideas, experiences from there, gathered. So I need to bring that back home to be able to show my people what I can bring to, ta to the table. Fantastic. Um, just you, you just mentioned now that you lived in England. When we started promoting this interview uh, two days back, I, I got a call from, from Moonland and somebody said, ah, uh, Mr. Oba, you want to ask uh, Bobby JJ uh, about his past in Holland? Uh, you want to tell us anything about your past in Holland? Were you at any point in time a resident in Holland? Were no. you? No, I've never lived in in Holland, but I do have families in Holland. I have a brother, a senior brother called Femi JJ, lives in Holland. I have another one in um, Dublin. I have a whole lot of judges um, in Holland. I do visit Holland and I do business there because I'm into car, car selling. Uh, a few years ago, I used to go to Holland, Utrecht, to be precise, to buy cars, stay in Holland three, four, five days, highest, buy my cars, ship them back to Lagos, and then go back to London, fly to Lagos. Okay, so you never lived in Holland? No, never. I wouldn't know why the person just told me to ask you that. 
Okay. Maybe he's talking to, about my business is another. The to the average person living in the federal constituency one in Sululere. Speak to some specific things you believe you would use that position to articulate to improve the quality of lives of your constituents if you were to be elected. Thank you, Mr. Oba. Now, like I said, I've lived in the Western world for a while. And i um, also lived in Surrey all my life. Um, the major problem we have in Surrey these days is um, the youth. The, most of the youth are out of work, nothing to do. If I'm elected, if the people of Surrey decide to elect me to, to represent them, I will use this opportunity to say to them that I have a lot to bring onto the table. You know, in Surrey, we are blessed with two national stadiums. I can say to you, the national stadium has been dominant, doing one, nothing. One national stadium, we have one state. state one we stadium. have state and we have a national stadium, but uh, they are both stadiums. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. They, are, they are stadiums. Yeah, yes. Stadia, yeah. Yes. So, um, the national one has been there for a while, doing nothing. And instead of dilapidation, yes, right? We basically. Getting dilapidated by the, by the days and the months. Yes, you're right. I can, I can say to you that I have an idea of turning that same stadium into a sports university. If we can use, um, I will use my office to lobby around, um, pass law, or try and, you know, present laws, um, um, a bill to, to be approved by the House, and I will lobby the House to approve it so that we can change the national stadium to a sports university. If we can do that, um, to, be, to be owned by the federal government that cannot yes. that, that cannot quite finance the the existing universities well enough. If they can, then they can make it a, um, a public um, a private uh, partnership with some private people that owns that has money to actually turn it around. I've, uh, somebody told me that um, there's a there's a man now trying to renovate the national stadium. Ba Baba Jebu, Baba Jebu is trying to do Baba that. Jebu was trying, I, I, I saw some some promotional materials that he's been undertaking some rehabilitation, but I don't know how articulate that is because I, I tend to jog inside the stadium and I don't see much difference. I can say to you, uh, nothing will happen. Nothing will come out of it. Uh, the, in the next few years, the national stadium will be abandoned again. But if we can change it to... Um, a sport university. You know, Surulere has been a sport center in, in, in the years, you know? So if we can look back and go into that direction, try and change that uh, national stadium to a sport university, we can have all our youth come in there, at the same time go to school, and at the same time be doing sports. If we can do that, that will now engage all the youth sitting around in Surulere doing nothing to go back to school and then get involved in sports. You know, sport these days, there's a whole lot of money. There's a, sport is a big business now. So if we can use that national stadium and turn it to um, a sports uh, university, and I can say to you, you will be shocked what we can achieve out of this. That way we can but empower when, when you. Say, when you say university, a dint of elitism is coming into that and you would from just my cursory understanding of Surulere, a, a lot of the youths might be left behind. I, I was going to think that something like the, an idea that Chief Olusha Degbami, uh, the famous uh, uh, mathematical Degbami, once promoted about, I think, 15 years ago, that was when I was returning from the diaspora, when he wanted the stadium concessioned to a group of people that he brought together. They were going to turn it into a sports arena and the kids in the neighborhood and, you know, from the outer, this thing could be, I don't know, but you have your own idea. I, I just remembered from, from what you've just stated now, I just remember that idea by Chief Olisha uh, Gwondebami, Mathematical Gwondebami. Now, that is one. But you must remember, Bobby, that you are just going to be 
one of about 340. How many are the members of the uh, House of Representatives? 345. 346 or so. 346. There are just going to be one out of 346 members of the House of Representatives. And we must use this opportunity to, to enlighten our public that members of parliament don't necessarily have executive powers. Right. Now, within the context of this lovely idea that you're putting on the table, and I must tell you that I'm personally enamored, you and I know that you'll be functionally so, so important that you can translate that good idea into, into an executable policy because you are not a member of the executive. How would you want to respond to that? Thank you. You know, like I told you when I was um, telling you about this idea, I said I will lobby. You know, all I'll do is lobby my mates at the house, at the Green Chamber, to buy into my idea. You know, the National Stadium has been seated there. It's a Western asset. It's just a Western, Western asset. asset. Every time I go in, my spirit is disturbed. How could a nation have this, this enormous asset? And the best we have left it to is just to degenerate. Let me quickly say to you, Mr. Oba, yes. Um, as a member of the um, Federal House, our main function is to make laws, oversight functionings, you know, um, uh, make amendments on laws, you know, 40 laws and stuff like that, yeah? But I haven't said that. There are other ways that we can, you know, get across to each other. You know, we have um, about 24 reps that will be representing Lagos, right? And other reps in the other states. All I need to do is lobby them so that they can buy into my idea so that the bill can be passed. Once it's passed, then we can forward it to the National Assembly, you know, the upper house, which is the Senate, to see if they will pass it. But once it comes back to the president and he can assent and then make a law and pass it, so the National Stadium can be changed, can be utilized that way. It's just an idea. I'm just saying to you that I can use my little ideas, my experiences overseas um, to try and bring it back home and then make use of it. If this can be passed to law, if we can change the national stadium to okay, a, a sports university, you can be shocked that we will have a whole lot of well, students it's gonna be, in it, there. It's going to be, to be honest with you, if, if, if that could be achieved, it's going to be very, very interesting. You know why it's going to be interesting? Because the youth... Uh, because the youths naturally uh, would, in many respects, benefit from it. Uh, and apart from that, if it's properly done, and it's not done with the delusion with which public universities are presently uh, financed and is probably concessioned to... Uh, anyway, that's, I'm also listening to this program. I'm not a youth, and I live in Surulere, uh, and I live in further constituency one surulere house of reps okay the youths you have an idea of what you would rather see them be uh be engaged with any policy framework for other residents of course yes in your constituency of course um i'm gonna make sure that um Whatever uh, constituency allowances, you know, uh, allocated to Surule will be well used towards the people of the Surule. And um, I'm going to bring um, something like um, uh, a small scale loan to artisans and, um, you know, uh, women, market women uh, will have like a micro, micro finance, something that we can arrange um, in my constituency there to reach out to people so that they can have money to start business. Because in Surule, when I drive by every single time, I'm so angry with the amount of um, unemployment um, that I see. People are just sitting doing nothing basically every single day. And um, the government is not doing so well in terms of um, engaging them, uh, providing jobs. So if I'm able to um, be um, uh, voted in, I'm sure there's a whole lot that I can bring into the uh, people of Surulere. If you're listening to 
Bobby JJ, the PDP People's Democratic Party's candidate for Suleri Federal Constituency 1, and you want to ask him questions even before we announce the numbers, the calls are rolling in. Good evening, caller. Your name, where you're calling from? What? My name is Akim Olaleni. And where are you calling from, please? I am calling from Maba presently. I'm a Suleri boy to the call. You are calling from Maba? Maba, yes, yes. Oh, fantastic. Okay, yes. uh, uh, Bobby JJ is all yours. Yeah, Bobby JJ is my brother. In fact, he took this, he, he won the ticket, we contested for the ticket together. Oh, you contested against him in the shadow election of the People's Democratic the Party? Yes. Uh, why are you not doing like Wiki? Why are you doing? No, 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 no. We are PDP, <laughs> we are one family. Okay, just joking. The just. final objective is to send the speaker away from that seat. We are far this time. Enough uh, is enough. But uh, yeah. would you would you want to agree with me that since he's become the speaker, since he became the speaker, he seemed to have brought some major projects into your into your constituency. The, Fine the, and beautiful. The roads uh, are yes. tired. The roads are tired. There's all the street, almost all the streets are lit. In the uh, by, by solar by solar uh, lighting in, in the evenings, uh, the the place is looking. In fact, as it is now, there's a major major rehabilitation work going on in Shita. You no, know, they're painting those uh, ruggedy and dilapidated high rises, changing the windows and the this. Although some will say, why would a parliamentarian be doing that for for people? You know, but I know there is that controversy too. So what, how would you yes. respond to that? Thank you. I want you. I want to. I want you to agree with me. The finance is our collective patrimony. Mm. It's not this from his own pocket. Mm. If I am speaker today, I will do far far more than that. Or uh, from today the speaker, I will do better than that. Yes. This is the fifth time well, in the house. Thank you very much. Practically, hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Mm. Practically, the first twenty years we could not see anything. But he used the advantage of the speaker, which is very good, correct. But I'm telling you, if PDP takes power, you will see a better development. You will see. Thank, thank you very better. much for calling in. You will see the principal people of Sudere enjoying better than what we have having presently. Thank you for calling in, and I must celebrate the kind of spirit you have. As uh, you know, this is the kind of spirit we like to see now in politics. Once you lose to somebody, rally around him because you are members of the same party. I really wish yeah. you well in all your four, four, uh, four thousand tickets. Thank you. Hello, thank you, Honorable uh, King. Yeah, my brother. All right, thank you so much for calling in. I will not You're disappoint welcome. you, and I will not disappoint the people of Surulay. I can assure thank you of that. Thank you so much. The numbers to call, should you be listening to us and you want to ask questions direct, the numbers are 070322. Seven seven three three eight zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight. Ah, the cause. Yeah. Uh, good evening, caller. Yeah, good evening. This is Sulu Afemi. Let me talk by Akin Refe, calling from Sulu. Okay. Uh, Federal yeah. constituency uh, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. You are the yeah. kind of cause I really like. I really, really glad to bring my boss' voice to right there. So I was informed that he's going to be online, so I have to quickly get over and come and make a contribution to this particular comment. Really, he has said it all, bros. He is the man, he's the one we choose, and he is the one that can do it right. He has just said it, he has just said and he, I believe in him, which we always trusted in him. So we shall allow him to just go ahead and vote for him and let us know where we are heading to. He is the man. Thank you very much. Is that the, Bobby? Bobby, I hope you've not gone, you know, I am a Muslim boy, when this, when these calls are coming in, and their places, and the... Uh, I'm a grassroots. I'm a Sulele boy. Okay, another call, Sule, another call. These are Sulele and coming. Hello? Good evening, your name, and where you're calling from, please? My name is Baba GJ, I'm calling from Lekki. Yeah. I'm a Sulele You see, in that Sulele, uh, that family by Javi Amila, he has used Obe, he has used Obe to call Obe 
I know what you mean, but would you be kind enough for the sake of our, our listeners who are not Yoruba speaking? He's just chanting them, he's just chanting them in that really. You know what happened? Because even he wants to go for fifth time, nobody in the APC can even dare to collect tickets. He checked all of them. So Zule people, they are very, very afraid of him. He that is APC. So Zule, we need change gone. So, so you believe that generally, <laughs> where, where you grew up, where his mother house, he didn't tie it until he became speaker. You need to be speaker before you can start the road in your mother's house where you are growing up. Oh, okay. He has been majority leader, house leader. Ah, so you need to change your 20 years, you will not be 24 years. So the king will go in. Bye bye. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, there's yes. some itchy in my skin that you know. She go go Bobby low, get her skin. Why? Sh why would I do that? No, you know because this calls coming in. Can I, we don't? Okay, please. If you what? If you listen to this program now, and you say have some affinities with Sulere, maybe is your natal area, you were born there or raised there. Even like the last caller, you now live in Lekki. I know, I don't want to go into it, I know not all of them will even claim Suleri, live in Suleri anymore. They, because whiskey has made it a global destiny now. <laughs> Everybody now claims Suleri. Um, but, uh, another call, another call. Your name please and where you are calling from? Hello? 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 Believe me, this is Lolade. Lolade? From Lekki. Okay. Please, uh, but, uh, to be frank, to be frank, we are tired of Bajabi Amila being the speaker, uh, being the. the but the, you live in Lekki now, Olalade. You are not a speaker. boy. I live in Masha for decades. Uh, so, uh, 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 you still have relations there? Yes, no, I don't. We want changes, that is all. We want changes. We are tired. Just that guy that I'm in Kurodutu, uh, that was being chased out. That, uh, House of Assembly. Yes, set up our assembly. The, the, leader, the leader of the house, now president yes, leader of the house. We've already chased him and said we are applicable to him. Ah, oh, 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 you are so, you seem to be speaking out of a, a dint of anger. The one thing is, that will somebody be there for 15, 25 years? For what? Is he the only one there? That was the, that, that, was, the kind of people? that was the kind of change people were looking oh, for oh, in 2015. Oh. Oh. <laughs> if I put it to me, it's the most person in the area as of today. Okay, thank you very much for calling. Thank you, um, Bobby. Uh, I'm not claiming this is a this is a scientific poll, oh, but the way it's going is like uh, maybe you'll be riding a tide that may favor you because people. <laughs> say, I don't I don't know, but I, initially I'm feeling like yeah, like you know, I said, the people of Surrey are on the radio; they can hear us, and I guess they like they said they are tired. I mean. Um, the Honourable has been there for over 20 years, and everybody in really knows what he is. Uh, no, it's going to be 20 years next it's year. It's going to be 20 May. years next year, May 29. Yeah, but if he gets re-elected... Then it will be 24. It is, you know, if he gets re-elected... So, what I'm here for is to tell the people of Surrey to vote me. We are tired, dead, and uh, we are ready for Okay, change. I've got messages for you... Uh, greetings, Mr. Oba. We welcome your guest. Please help, help us ask him his position regarding the current tumor in PDP. Are you demand for resignation in perspective from Olayinka? You are a ranking PDP member. Yes. You are holding one of the most strategic uh, candidatures of the party. Yes. And uh, with the ongoing uh, furore at the national level of the party, you must have an opinion. Are you in the same position with members of the Southwest, be under the leadership of uh, Makinde, or oh, and uh, are you, you know, one of those who believe that uh, Atiku has won the the candidature, the presidential candidature, and uh, they should just everybody should just line up behind him. Um, thank you so much. Like I said, um, I'm the candidate of the PDP now. Uh, the National Working Committee had made a decision. They said, um, Senator, how you should continue. Uh, I have no any other thing to say than what the party, uh, I'm a party man. 
whatever the whatever the and party's that, decision uh, is that's where i fantastic position to I know that by. you are lining up with the party but that ordinarily puts you in a play in a position that is uh, somewhat different from uh, some prominent members of your party in the southwest baba Bode, george in lagos governor Mackin day in uh, in oyo who is technically the leader of the party in the in your region of the country geopolitical zone and some other prominent so you are your own man you don't go out to anybody you believe the party the party should i do not have any other party but pdp so i have to throw the line of the party so that even takes me to a question that somebody said i should ask you, you. bola you know Bagja, Bagja must have raised that guy with a view to give a facade of competition maybe i guess you know i'm sorry if this sounds a bit disrespectful but that was the way the guy said it to me but uh my dad but boy no don't mind that guy but guy is he's probably one of Baja's boys you know that his house is not even far from Baja's uh, mom's house that uh, Baja must have raised him to give a facade of competition how would you respond to uh, to, to such a such a remark thank you so much um you would need to come to Surrey to know who, who my family is um, I'm the first son of my father. Uh, there's nothing at all in terms of connection that I have with Baja. I've never met Femi Baja Bermila one on one. I've never spoken um, to him. But he's a Suri boy, like yes, he is. But uh, we are now friends. I'm a member of PDP. He's a member of the APC. Um, I've been chasing this uh, ticket for a very long time, 16 years to be precise. You know, I actually left England to, to come back home fully so that I can concentrate on me getting this ticket, which I finally got this time around. So I'm going to give all my heart to this. I'm going to contest. I'm going to face him squarely. Um, I have nothing. I have no contact. I've never met him. I've never. I think we, we spoke one time on the phone. That must have been about eight, ten years ago. He called me through a guy. He's late now. His name is um, Ade Kass. Um, Adekas was with him, he called me and he said hello, um, maybe we can meet one day and we can have dinner and discuss politics. And I said, okay, no problem, but we, we've never met. So I have no contact with him and I can't see, yes, if we, um, um, I'm a party man, I guess he's a party man also. If we meet on the part of political platform, we can discuss, talk and get to know each other. But in terms of um, somebody saying, maybe Femi has something arranged for me, no, I'm not that kind of a person. But, but you know, this is a classic David and Goliath story. Yes, it is. Um, Mr. Oba, um, I can say this to you freely. The people of Lagos, the people of Nigeria, are sick and tired of APC. Um, the people of Surulay, you can see them calling, telling you a whole lot of things about Surulay. I'm a Surulian. I know what's going on in Surulay. People will be shocked with the uh, with the um, voting pattern come February 25th next year. You know, I need to say this on here. You see, um, before people do not come out because they believe that their vote won't count. But now there's something called the Beavers. The Beavers is something that people of Nigeria now see as something that will make them come out to vote. Because I can assure you, if people comes out on that day and vote their vote will be counted. And so, I know and I know you will take me to a show how the PDP used to be beavers to to lash the ABC. And then, then I would just remind you that uh Ekiti was in the rear view of Oshun and yet the APC retained the the, yes. the go governorship let notwithstanding quickly, the beavers. Let me quickly say something about Ekiti and Oshun. Ekiti is quite different from um Oshun. Enlighten me. Yes. In the case of uh, Ekiti, um, vote had, buying was alleged. Not an not, enormous not amount even, of vote not, buying. Not even about vote buying. Mm. You, can, you can see that a member of the PDP who was, mem who was one of the people contesting for the ticket by His Excellency Shegoni had to leave the PDP to go to an the SDP yeah. because he didn't get the ticket. Right? At that time, Shegoni was the most popular in Ekiti, but some forces in the party didn't let him get the ticket. 
So he had to move to another party. But you want to mention the forces? No, not on here. No, but somebody somebody told me that you have a very bad history with Fire Shea, that at some point the two of you were go, were gone. I, I, and I was wondering how could they sue Larry Boy. But so, somebody said you once held a national position in PDP? Yes. I was formerly a Southwest Youth Leader. The Southwest Youth, youth Leader of Our PDP. Party. Yes. And that was when you conflicted with, uh, uh, was it was he was a sitting governor then? Are you yes, I didn't have anything with, to do with him. Okay. <laughs> but so, the fact was there was just something going on in, at the party in Ikiti at that time that Honorable, um, no, Excellency Shegoni didn't get the ticket. So people of the of Ikiti wanted Shegoni. But Shegone didn't get the ticket. That's why Shegone had to go to a new S created SDP. party, SDP. And he, 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 he came second, you know. And this party has only been in existence for three months. So you can understand that. It's been more than that. Yes. But uh, he enlivened the party. Yes. For those of you listening to us, you live in Surulere or you have any affinity or connection with Surulere and you want to speak to some of the issues that Honorable JJ has raised, more so if you are even an APC person, it does seem that she uh, was APC person, don't be any Surulene. Everybody is calling and they are saying about time they saw the back of the numbers to call 070 322 seven seven three three eight zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight or zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine now we had a call but it broke yeah, yeah. I am just imagining the resources at the disposal. Okay. Hello, good evening, caller. Your name and where you're calling from. Hello. 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 The line, I guess the line is okay. Uh, zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight zero seven zero three two two seven seven three three eight or zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine zero nine zero nine five 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 one zero three nine good evening caller your name and where you are calling from hello good hello. evening good evening good evening, good evening sir Evening. Yeah, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you. And you too. Yeah. Your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm listening to your grace, yes. Yeah. But it says something about Suriname that there's nothing about a uh, tangible incendiary that people can use it to opportunity, use the opportunity to vote for it. But for me, oh, in uh, Suriname, there are many uh, projects going on in Suriname now that people can testify to it. Give us some, give yeah. us some, you know, so that ah. people will know that he's not selling the old truth. Some, some, some street there yeah, now. The work, the, the work is going on on some street there yeah, now. As in, yeah, yeah. the roads are yeah, tired. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, uh, the gentleman just called in now. He's saying, uh, how could you then say s not much is happening in Surulere really when almost all the roads are tired when? Apart from almost all the roads are tired, there are projects like that going on. I let's take this second call again. Caller, your name? Ah, please tune down your radio. Your name and where you are calling from? Ah, uh, hello, good good afternoon. My name is Shagun Bai. Shagun Bai, okay. From where are you calling? Yeah, yeah I'm coming from Surulia right now. Fantastic. Yeah, I just want to quickly say this, and um, that's just the fact. How do you? define a better person if you do not try the second person that is the you know the answer for the last caller now you understand if Bajadamila is doing his facilitating project now because he's a speaker somebody that can do better is right beside you my uh, my moderator i can tell you i can beat my chest probably jj 
it's gonna be a better time. Do you know him personally? Do you know him personally? I've I've met him a couple of times, and uh, you know, from there, when I heard what he's saying, and I know that this person is a material. And I've met uh, what's he called too? The other guy that is the speaker today. I know his shoulder is always up, but yeah, yeah, we bring his shoulder down, and that's a good quality of a good leader. Thank you for coming. So to, to to me, I want to preach, and I want to beg the Sule people to please go in line. You are campaigning already. You are campaigning already. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yo, uh, Bobby, Bobby, right. Bobby, your ha your your right hand on your chest, your left hand raised up. You want to tell me this is not organized? Never. By the, by, okay, I, I I believe you. Ah, okay, we have another call. Okay. 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 We have another. Sorry about that. Yeah. My callers always hold the, get the piece. Hello. Hello. Your name and where you're calling from, please. My name is Luke. I'm calling from Lekki. Okay. You have any connection with Suriname, or you just want to talk generally? Uh, I I I live with me for a bit. I live with me every month. Okay. That man, that that man is a bit change. The new thing. The new way has been the way it was since the script I made this way before Barua uh, for Dickory Journey. I went over 20 years. You see the way, the way it is. Many places. Let them see that man. Let them see that man. Okay, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, if you are if you are an APC, a para chick, and you are listening to this program this evening, I guess it's about time you people sat down and re-strategized. I am saying this as a non-partisan, uh, uh, as a non-partisan uh, journalist. You know, at some point, I, I was joking about it, but at some point there was a part of me that was feeling, how could he have organized all these calls? But it does seem that the calls are genuine. And about time somebody took the the people of Suleri or Lagos. In fact, some calls came from Lekki. Uh, Bobby, you want to respond to some of the last? You know, yeah, the, the last, three last calls? I just said um, something about um, the roads have been tarred and stuff like that. The yes. penultimate color, yes, yes, uh, yes. which is true. Nobody yes. can take that away. Yes, let me quickly say something. For example, I will, I'll give you a typical example. Right, uh, a few days ago, I went out. I came back home. I have a political office on uh, of Benson. And at the middle of the night, around 7 p.m. in the in the night, um, the roads they started tying the road in the night overnight. That road that leads to my uh, campaign office was towed. But I can say this to you: that road was actually towed in 1959. Yeah. Okay. Let's. I'll let you do. It. Uh, we have a caller waiting. Caller, your name and where you are calling from. Good evening. My name is Benson. I'm calling from Surulere. I hope you are not on Benson Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, thank you. Yeah, like, like other callers have said, I think that 20 years in the parliament is enough for Femi Bajabi Amina. Um, in fairness to him, like some people have said, he don't vote for Suri as speaker. But my question is, in the years before he became speaker, what was he doing? Um, <laughs> and I think that at the moment, Femi Bajabi Amina has become very cocky and hot, hotsy. His word is ye and amen within the APC in Suriname. I have a lot of friends in the APC. They grumble a lot. Many of them are eyeing his seats, but no one dared to pick the tickets. So he has found a way of what, in quotes, settling them and shutting them up. They refer to him as Oga, Oga, Oga. Wow. So Suriname can, can know better. Suriname can have better. Five times, I mean, I don't think, I don't see what he wants to become again after being speaker. Thank you very much, Benson, for calling. Um, uh, uh, let me, let me, let me also put. Uh, the, we have a couple of this uh, on on WhatsApp. Uh, greetings, Mr. Oba. We were, okay, uh, okay. Let's keep on responding to uh, any of the call, any of the four last calls we've got. Okay. Yeah, like I said, the road was actually towered in 1959 when all those little low-cost houses were built. Yeah. 1959. And that road, um, um, Benson Fuja, there's no one single portal on it. And Femi came overnight and towed the road, yeah, with some little thin layers of uh, artifact on it. But I can assure you, within three months, those roads, after two, three rains, there'll be portals on the road. So why is he doing that? He's actually doing that uh, to buy votes. If you look at his um, um, 
You keep saying to buy. You keep saying to buy votes. Yes. So he needs to at least serve his people. Hold on a minute, sir. He's representing us in Surulere. We have so many other. We have so many other streets in Surulere that has no towed road. Why do you tow a road that that's already been towed? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's say he will not tow the towed road. He will tow the towed road, or he will corner the towed road. Uh, no. That's not what we need in Surulere. Uh, okay. We need. We need but we look need at the other stuff. Look at the magnificent job is doing in Shita, okay. where Mashita is actually the bastion of the votes in your constituency. The, you know, repenting the high rises, many of those high rises looking very dilapidated, very visually, very visually perturbing, uh, yanking off the dilapidated windows and whatever. Uh, you know, would you, what would you say about that? It's giving back to the community. Oh, uh, okay. Why would you be renovating other people's houses? That is very wrong. Um, as a member of the Federal House, that's not part of his job. Why would you be renovating? He did took out their doors, their windows, and repaint a private house for people. You don't do things like that. You need to touch the life of people, not through those ones that we call it vote buying. Now, election is running. That is a serious now. allegation. Yes, it is. Let me say this to you, sir. Um, we ha uh, in the next couple of months, we'll be going into the general election. Why is it now? Uh, shit has been built over 40 years. Why is it now, a uh, few months to election, it now comes to people's private houses and take their doors off and windows and, and start Bobby doing Jeje, I can only, I can only wish you well. Thank you so much. If, you know, it's not a very scientific uh, statistical polling but with the number of calls we got today if the voters of your constituency were to go in that direction I'm seeing a last slide but my brother don't be fooled you may still need to work very hard it's it. a case of David and Goliath you it. want to uh, give your last remark yes I'm going to be saying this to the people of Surulere um, once again my name is Bola Jalani JJ born and bred in Surulere live through Liri, work in through Liri. Um, I will need all the vote I can get. This is the, uh, this is, um, I will call this a fight between David and Goliath. Uh, many people say, oh, how am I going to win Femi Bajabiamela? They will be shocked on the day of the election when people will troop out and come out to vote. I can assure the people of through Liri that all you need to do is come out and vote. There will be enough security on, on the street to try and protect you Nobody will harass you. You can come out and vote for whoever you want. If it's PDP, please feel free to vote for us. If it's APC or Labour, please feel free to vote for them. But the thing is, you need to vote for a party that has um, um, things to offer. APC has been in government in Lagos State for 24 years. 30 seconds more. 24 years, there's nothing uh, on ground to show. And I want everybody to follow me on my... Um, on my social media handles, uh, Facebook, Bobby JJ Alani, on on Instagram, Bobby JJ Official, on Twitter, Bobby JJ Alani. I repeat again, Facebook, Bobby JJ Alani, on Instagram, Bobby JJ Alani Official, and on Twitter, Bobby JJ Alani. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Uh, this is where we wrap it for this episode. As usual, my studio mama, the producer of the show, is Wire Ofigo. I sign off uh, once again as Bola Oba. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, guys. My name is Dele Momodu, and you are listening to Law FM 103.9 for knowledge and entertainment. You're, you're only Law Reduced.